Now, Isaiah, you know why we're sitting down and talking this afternoon, don't you? Uh, it, 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 it's Jeremiah, sir. Say what now? My, my, my name, sir, it's, it's Jeremiah. Listen here, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, whatever your name is. The problem here, son, is that your pipeline is just terrible. Why can't you be like Amber? She closed five deals this month. Jacob over there, he closed seven. You closed one deal in the past two months. Now listen here, if you don't start bringing some opportunity up in here, if you don't go and turn this ship around, we're going to turn it around for you and push you right out that door. Now coming next month, we need some deals closed. Do I make myself clear, Ezekiel? Um, um, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Now you remember, you got one month. Go on out and close my door. This episode is brought to you in part by Sales Success Summit. If you're a sales rep and you're looking for ways to improve your skills, you want to learn from the top 1% of sellers, you need to attend Sales Success Summit. The event is held this year, October 14th through 15th in Austin, Texas. To find more information, visit the show notes or go to top1summit.com. Again, top1summit.com. This episode is also brought to you in part by TSE Certified Sales Training Program. Learn how to find more ideal customers, build stronger value, close more deals. There are 12 modules available in the program. The first two modules are absolutely free. Test them out for yourself. Go to the salesevangelist.com slash free course. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And as you heard in a teaser, and this month so far, we're going to talk about sales leadership, what you can do to make sure you help your team and help your team to perform to their peak. Now, one of my friends asked a question on LinkedIn, and you can ask me questions and I'll turn them into episodes. I'd love to do that. He said, Donald, I need your suggestion. Here's the thing. How do you deal with a salesperson who's struggling? I've seen this done badly in the past, and we've just had one rep go through a tough patch, but came out good on the other side. So this is a question that I absolutely love. It is right in my ballpark. I'm going to share with you some ideas, some of my own and some that I've learned from Mike Weinberg, and I've bragged about his book. And if you haven't checked it out, I recommend you go do so. It's called Sales Management Simplified. But you and I both know as sales reps and sales leaders that we're all going to go through our rough period, our dark moments, so to speak, where we don't know what we're doing or we feel like nothing we're doing is just working out properly. I've been selling for years, but just can't close something this past quarter. What is going wrong? Usually there are several key things that can tie back to that and we'll address it. But I want to ask you some questions, some questions that you should be considering. None of these situations typically happen overnight. It's usually because of slippage in certain areas. But before I even go deeper into talking about what you can do to fix the challenges, I want to ask four questions. I want you to be brutally honest with them yourself. And if you're a sales rep in a situation like this, you need to be brutally honest with yourself. The first one is, do they have a desire to succeed and to thrive in sales? Plain and simple. Now, I may sound basic on that. It may sound elementary. But if a sales rep doesn't have a desire to succeed, if they don't have a drive, if they don't want to do the job, no matter how much training or coaching or help that you give them, if they don't want to do it, they ain't going to do it. So that's the first thing you need to ask and be brutally honest with yourself. The second question is, why are they in sales on my team? Now, that's important. Many people go into sales by accident. Maybe, many people, maybe they had a desire and they just did well at one point, but they became lazy and just don't want to do it anymore, just going through emotions. How did this person come on your team? Did you inherit them? Did you hire them? What is it that brought this person into your team? Why did it come in the first place? Why did you accept them? Why were they even there? I want you to answer that question. The third question is what caused him or her to get here? Here meaning in this situation today, and I know it didn't happen overnight, and you probably saw signs as a sales leader, as the sales rep, you know exactly what some of those things may have been. And maybe you don't, maybe we'll point them out to you today, but there are certain things that you probably realize that you just didn't do right, or you started skipping steps on, or you just neglected to do in the first place. If that's the case, be honest. Again, 
write down what those things are. And the fourth and final one is, what have they done and what have you done to fix the problem? All right, now that you're brutally honest with yourself, now that you want to fix the solution, you want to make the situation right, here are some things that I would recommend that you do as the sales leader. All of us must have regular one-on-ones. If you have listened to our podcast, you know that I'm a big believer in this. If you work with me outside of the podcast, on, in any of the organizations that I work with, you know that I'm a big proponent of one-on-one. The leadership meeting with others, with their superiors to have one-on-ones, and individuals on the team, the frontliners meeting with their managers to have one-on-one. If we are not having one-on-ones, we're missing out on crucial, critical moments, opportunities to connect and opportunities to fine-tune and to fix little micro problems before they become huge cracks, jeopardizing a foundation or jeopardizing the stability of our organizations. Now, when I say one-on-one, this could be something you do monthly. I wouldn't go further than that, especially in sales. I don't want you to, if you're doing a quarterly one-on-one, yeah, that's kind of too far. You're not able to have a pulse on the situation. So in a case where I'm working with a struggling sales rep, More than likely, some of the things, if the person was brutally honest, what are some of the things that stopped happening? And my friend Jacob pointed this out when he asked me the question, was that maybe prospecting. The individual is not planning prospecting. You don't have time management set up right. So what I mean by this is that the sales rep come in each and every day and they linger or they just go around in circles. They don't have a clear set plan. They don't say, well, for the next two hours, I'm going to make sure I'm not interrupted and I'm going to do outreach. I'm going to do phone calls, pick up the phone, or I'm going to send these particular outreach emails, or I'm going to reach out to people on LinkedIn. If you're not doing one-on-one coaching scenario monthly, you're not going to have a good pulse on what exactly is going on. If you recognize that she is not prospecting regularly, then you can implement that or encourage her or coach her or guide her, go on some ride-alongs and help her to set up that properly in her schedule. And then now you have another month to see the actual work getting put in place so the results can come. That's only going to come from that one-on-one. And we're not, Mike Weinberg talks about this again in his book. Some of us, we fall into the the pit of emails where we just want to email the rep or we want to text message them. No, I'm talking about if they're local, you need to have a knee-to-knee, eye-to-eye, not necessarily, but in the office where you're one-on-one, you start off the meeting you have an agenda, so to speak, that you can go through just like with any other important meetings. And you have that one-on-one discussion with your sales rep. Have them come prepared. You come prepared. You can then go through some of the different things that's going to evaluate how he or she is doing. It also tells me as a sales rep that you care for me because that's the one thing that I know you can't, you can't fabricate. You can't create. And you, I know you're busy, but you're willing to take time out of your day to meet with me. That means a lot. And you're willing to offer suggestions and guidance. That's important to me. Now, go back to this question. There's a few episodes back. I spoke about the idea that if something is important to your sales rep, it needs to be important to you. And if you're not having that one-on-one to figure out what that thing is, then you're going to miss out again. You need to make sure you dedicate that time towards doing that. So one-on-one is the first thing that I would share. And if the sales rep is really, really struggling and needs some help, maybe you can do bi-monthly. Twice a month, you can have them meet with you and to have a coaching session. Maybe you don't necessarily have to have a one hour full, but maybe 30 minutes every two weeks. That way you can help the individual. The second thing that I would share, and this one I get from Mike Weinberg, but I really, I'm a big believer in this. I did this while I was a software sales rep and it was changing my mindset to think that I am the entrepreneur over my territory, right? And what Mike suggests that you do is that you come with a plan, a business plan for your territory, for your areas. If they're BDR, your inside sales, you can still come up with a simple business plan. That starts off with a goal. What's the goal that you're going to have? And if you're working with a struggling sales rep, this is one thing you can help them with. Give them a plan or, no, excuse me, let's back that up. I'm not going to give them a plan. I'm going to help them create a plan because they have the ownership of that plan and they're going to live it and to follow it so we can have some accountability. So the plan might start off with some goals. What's the goal for the next three quarter, or next three months in this quarter? Maybe it's going to be that your financial goal for the area. I want to generate $150,000 in new business. And from existing clients, I want to generate $200,000. Perfect. So we have $350,000 as a financial goal. Now we're going to figure out how he or she is going to do that. Let's identify some of these accounts, these current customers that you're going to get it from. So to break down that plan and say, well, these are the accounts and these are some of the opportunities that I feel we could have. We have some of these promotions that are coming up or we have some of these things that we see could benefit them that we've seen other clients use. Awesome. You're coming up with a clear plan. Let me know when you're going to put this together. Let's have a time frame of 
how you're going to implement this plan. From new business, what are you going to do to generate that number, that 150,000 in new business? That may come from prospecting. That may come from referrals. What is your plan to get the referrals or to do the prospecting? You get where I'm getting at. But once I can have that framework broken down with my sales rep, where they talk about the goal, talk about the plan, and then to fine tune by putting that plan into calendar when they're going to execute those things, then I know that he or she is on a good path. I'm on a good path. We also need to have some consequences in there. What will happen or what must happen? You ask the sales rep, if you don't follow, if you're following this plan, this is your plan, and you do these things, and I'm going to coach you, and I'm going to work with you, I'm going to do some ride-alongs, I'm going to help you out. What do you think should happen if you don't start having a turnaround? Or what do you think would be the, a good turnaround to look at? They might say, well, if I get 100% of my quota, or if I get 90%, like, okay, you set that as your parameter, great, let's work towards that. What should happen if you don't hit 90%? Well, then I should probably go on the final level of probation or I should go on probation. Okay, you name the consequences. And the interesting thing with that too as a sales leader is that your sales rep, just like kids, sometimes they're going to give you some harsher actions than you probably would have imposed. But because they're the ones saying it, yeah, you know, now they're going to realize there's some reality to it that they need to change. They know their weaknesses and where they're slipping. And the consequence need to be great in their eyes. So if they say, yeah, if I'm not improving after that, you know, hitting that 90%, you have all right stuff, let me go. Then they agree to that, you agree to that. Let's move forward. Now, going back to what we had in a teaser with the sales leader that didn't even know the name of his sales rep, you can't have that. That one-on-one is going to help with that. I am going to do all I can. I'm going to bend backwards to a sales rep that has a desire to improve. I'm telling you, I'm going to try to move mountains for them. And if the sales rep really wants to do better and really is going to take advantage of the, the coaching and the training and my time is going to be worth it for them and they really created an awesome business plan and they want to implement the stuff, I am going to get them other resources. Maybe it's get them books or maybe encourage them to listen to podcasts like this or meet with them or email them every once in a while you know, throughout the day or throughout the weeks and just kind of check in on them. Because if they're thriving and succeeding, then my company is going to grow and my business is going to increase or improve. And if I'm not the business owner, it's still going to help me because that's my job is to generate revenue. Now, it's way cheaper as well to help the sales rep improve than to go out and to go through a hiring process. But if, unfortunately, if the sales rep is not living up, doesn't want to succeed and doesn't have that strong desire and they don't want to take advantage of implementing this plan and to dedicate the time to work in it, bruh, then have to make the decision and just say, this is not working out. You need to leave. You're not going to be a part of the team anymore. But if they are, listen to me, we're going to work this plan. I've been in a situation where I was not performing. I had difficulties. I had hard time, but I had sales leaders that believed in me, that they saw my drive and my passion and they coached me and helped me and look where I'm at today. And I'm grateful for them. But you must make sure, again, go back to those questions at the beginning. There has to be a plan. Now, after you've gone through this and you worked a plan for that 30 day, uh, excuse me, 90 days, those three month period, and a sales rep is still not improving then you need to make some other decisions. If this is not working out for them, there must be a reason why. But let's recap so far. You started doing one-on-one coaching with the sales rep and you should be doing with all of your sales rep in the first place. So schedule that out right now for all of them. Everyone should have a one-on-one with you once a month at least. Now, you also help them to create a sales plan that they're following. Great. The third level, the third thing that I would do is to put them on probation. This might mean that it's an informal probation where you have X amount of time. Maybe it's a 30 day or 30 day period to hit this marker. And I'm going to help them. I'm going to continue, maybe do a little bit more extra help to guide this individual to succeed. And if that doesn't work after the 90 days, maybe it's a par that I want them to hit. And in my industry, maybe it's to set 20 initial conversations with brand new prospects and to close one business, one deal that month. That's fine. That's what the par would be. I'm going to help him. Now, the formal probation might come in a form of them doing this on their own. We have put resource in it. We've helped them. And now they're not trying. They're not doing their part. I'm just going to say, Al, listen, you're on your own. For the next 20 days, you have to turn the ship around. You have to do this. And if they're not hitting that milestone that we both agree on or that I set for them, which maybe it is that 20 appointment, or maybe since it's 20 days, it's only going to be 15 or 10 appointments. Usually at this stage, that sales rep, if they don't want to be there, if they really want to be there, they're going to improve from the first things, the one-on-one, and then you're going to go into the formal probation. And then the final thing is just kind of like, I don't know, Mike Weinberg talks about in his book as well. And the same thing I've seen 
it's just more like a pleasantry. If they're not improving by that point, they're gone. And they know it, and I know it, and we just need to make it swift as possible. So I hope that I answered the question, how do you help a struggling sales rep? The first part of this is to make sure you have one-on-one. The second part, which is the most critical, make sure they have a plan for their area. If they're working a plan, that's going to help them to do the fundamental things like the prospecting efforts. That's going to help them to do the planning on a day-to-day basis. That's going to help them to educate themselves with other resources such as podcasts or books. That might mean that they invest in themselves or get outside help, like check out even my program, TSC Certified Sales Training Program. I've had sellers do that where they wanted to improve. So they spent the you know five $600 and work with me on their own outside of their company to get the help with our group coaching program. That's something that the individual can do as well. But the biggest part, the biggest part is you spending one-on-one time with them, identifying the problem. And then the number two area is you helping them to create a plan, working that plan, and then encouraging them to work that plan and following upon that plan in your monthly one-on-one meeting. Keep them accountable. They must hit those numbers. They agree to it. You sign it. They sign it. Boom. Hope this gave you some help. Hope this gave you some insights that can guide you and your team. Overall, I share the stuff because I want to help you. We have links back in the show notes. Like we mentioned, Mike Weinberg's book is also in there as a link. TSC Certified Sales Training Program, which will help new and struggling sellers get to their peak level. You can find that in there as well. As well as Sales Success Summit. We have all the information back there. The salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1162. I want you to go out each and every day and find your ideal customers. I want you to find them easier. I want you to have more meaningful conversation and build stronger value. I want you to be able to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Stay tuned for a scene from our next episode. Some people can't stop talking. They're not able to, they don't listen because they have head trash that I must explain everything in order for someone to buy from me. Or they get nervous and they think that they have to show and prove their expertise in order to be respected, for example. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show today as much as I did. And if so, as you know, this is my birthday month. Go ahead and hit subscribe and give that to me as a birthday gift. Also, share with your colleagues the podcast. Show them how they can subscribe as well. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would truly appreciate that. Our show today was produced by myself and the Sales Podcast Network. It was edited and mixed together by the one and only Jershon O'Bale. Our content writer and show note was created today by Rael. Our podcast guest coordinator is May Marr. All of our amazing graphics are created by Dessen. Our podcast production coordinator is Shannon Rasmussen. You can find audio credits to this and all of our episodes in the show notes. And as always, I am your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. Sales Podcast Network.